And that's what I think of the new Content Aware Fill Tool. In case anyone was curious. We are rolling on Photoshop 2020's new feature. Today we're taking a look at Content Aware Fill. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. In this video, we're showing you the new content aware fill. Basically, all you have to do is circle the thing you want to remove and using the new content aware fill tool, it figures out other things in your image and puts them in the right place. So we got two different images for you today, a simple image and something a little bit more complex. Putting this tool to the test, we got an awesome tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here are the images for today. Let's jump right in with our simple examples. So let's hit F for full screen. And all in all, the photo looks great, but there are a couple things that I want gone from this image. This thing down here, just a little bit distracting. And of course, telephone wires, we want those out. So how do we use this tool? The first thing we need to do is make a selection. You can do any of your selection tools. I'm just gonna go with my simple lasso and first just draw an area right around this thing I wanna remove. Okay, but next we're gonna to go to edit and down to content aware fill. Now the whole idea here, this used to just kind of do it automatically and now we have this dialog box with a lot of controls. So here in your little preview window, this is your preview. It's gonna show you what it's gonna look like in the after. And here in your original image, you see this green area around there. Basically that's showing you, I'll just bring this to the side so you can see it. That's where it's gonna sample from, okay? Now we have a few options right here. You can choose auto, you can choose to draw your own rectangle or just choose a custom area. We're gonna get more into that later because right now it just did a good job. So we don't need to make it more complicated. Uh, we're just gonna hit okay and boom, it removed that thing. Now you can choose to have this output on a new layer if you'd like or just on the current layer. By the way, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you can download these sample images right here on flurn.com. So just follow the link, boop, 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 right down below and you can follow along. So next I'm gonna get rid of these telephone wires. We're gonna go back to our background layer. I'm just gonna make, again, just a super quick lasso selection around my telephone wires. Perfect. We're gonna go to edit and down to content where fill. It actually works really well. I'm thinking about making a keyboard shortcut for it. Now here again, you can choose to output this to a new layer, the current layer, or just duplicate the layer. We'll just choose a new layer. So we'll hit okay. Uh, this way it's non-destructive. So here we have what it filled in for our telephone wires and what it filled in for that little area. And look at that, before and after. Now, granted, pretty simple situation here. Let's see what happens when we get a little bit more complex. So for this one, we have uh, some surfers in the background that I wanna remove. So we're gonna start off with the this guy here in the background. Again, just regular lasso tool. We're gonna start just selecting the whole thing we wanna remove and see how this does. Now, we got a lot of stuff going on here. We've got some in focus area, some out of focus area, splashes, color changes. There's a lot going on here. So we're gonna see what this tool can do. We're gonna to go to edit down to content aware fill. Okay, now if I zoom out on my original image, you see all this uh, green area? That's where it's actually sampling from. Okay, so this is like telling me, hey, it's trying to pull information from all this area to fill in over here. And it did an okay job. It honestly, like it doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't look that bad. Um, we do have some options that we can choose, for instance, color adaptation. Let me just change this to high and see if my colors blend in. You know what? That made it worse. Uh, something, sometimes you have to just go to these rotation adaptation. We'll hit okay there. Uh, sometimes it can actually help these. We're gonna turn on scale. Uh, Yes, you get all these little warning dialogues. Yes, I'm like, yes, please just don't show that again. Uh, so we've done all these different options and this hasn't helped at all. We're just gonna go back to none and then turn these back off. So those things haven't helped. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna hit cancel real quick. And instead of trying to do this whole thing at once, I'm gonna cut it in half. So let's just try over here. We're gonna just get you uh, to start off with. So let's go to edit down to content to where fill. All right, and now we see how this does. So we'll just go ahead and zoom in, okay? And also this was set to auto and you can see it's trying to pull information from like over here and over here, which is fine. But at this point, it shouldn't be pulling in splash information, right? There's no splashes right there. 
So what we're gonna do is choose custom. All right, now you get a little warning dialogue, of course, it just tells you where to paint, basically. So let's hit okay. And now you're not gonna paint on this little preview, you're actually gonna paint here in this area, okay? So you're gonna paint in this area, and basically you're just telling it, hey, like this is where I want you to pull information from. So notice I didn't paint over any splashes, so it's not gonna try to pull any splash information, okay? So I'm like painting over this area and I'm saying, okay, do, do your best job there. And if you paint somewhere and it doesn't help, you can hold Alt or Option and minus that out. Okay, and you still got your little preview there. Actually, I think that helped minus that guy's hair. We don't want, we don't want any of your hair. Hey, get your hair out of here. Uh, let's try our color adaptation. We'll just bring that to high. Uh, I think that's actually looking pretty good. So let's hit okay there. Now I'm just gonna have this output on the current layer. It's a little bit destructive, but whatever. I've got some things that I wanna do. You know what, let's go to duplicate layer, less destructive. Okay, we need to do this again, right? So off to a start here, but I need to just kind of do this a little bit more. So let's go ahead and pull this in there. And again, we're gonna go to edit and content aware fill. Uh, you know, we're kind of throwing some relatively difficult situations at this. Let's see what it looks like on auto. How did you do on auto? Again, it's pulling in all this splash information. I don't really need that. All right, all these dialog boxes are kind of annoying. I guess you could just turn them off, but um, let's just tell it, hey, this is where I want you to pull information from. All right, fantastic. Pull in that information there. Uh, that looks pretty good. Now, our color adaptation, let's just bring that to high. I find this color adaptation can really do a good job. If you set it to none, you very much see that there's something not going on there. Um, back to default. Scaling will try to like make details larger and smaller to try to fit, and mirroring will like flip details back and forth to try to fit. But honestly, that's not it's not helping at all, is it? No, no, it's not. Uh, let's just take our road. Sorry, not the rotation. We'll take the color adaptation, and I'll go to high because I think that actually worked pretty well. Okay. Well, there we go. I think that's actually looking pretty good. I'm just gonna output this to the current layer. So let's hit okay there, all right? And see where we're looking, pretty, pretty good. Last thing I need to do is just right over here. Uh, again, edit and then down to content to where fill. Uh, and then this one, I'm just gonna click on auto because it's probably gonna pull in some splash information. That's so funny because on this one, it's not trying to do splash. Okay, so I'm gonna click on custom again which these are the new features, by the way, the ability to add like custom, um, you know, custom information here. That's what's new in 2020. All right, cut out color adaptation. We're gonna have to bump that up so it actually looks a little bit more realistic there. There we go. Let's try to, you know, pull in some of that information there. You say you get all this to work with. This is, you know, Everything your heart desires, you can you can work with it here. <laughs> all right, there we go. That's still not doing that well. Let's just go ahead and minus all this stuff out. So you can choose your own areas, obviously, which is super nice. Again, Alt or Option to minus some areas out. Um, there we go. And we'll just paint in over here. Maybe it'll figure out what we want. Nope, didn't quite do exactly what we wanted. All right, that looks pretty decent. Let's just go ahead and turn our color adaptation up even far. Uh, you know, it was working better when I did this right beforehand. Let's hit cancel because I'm just not super happy with that. At this point, what I want to do personally is just grab a clone stamp tool and, and make this happen. So I'm going to hit cancel there and I'm going to say, you know what? It did okay there, you know, but not exactly what I want. Let's see what it does up here. After all, this is a test of the tool. So. Let's go ahead and grab our lasso. We're gonna circle this uh, individual, this handsome young bloke with his head turned uh, and see what this does. Again, we're, I would just wanna try auto like always to start with. Yeah, and that actually did pretty well. Let's hit okay there. That output into the current layer, totally fine with me. Let's do this one up here. We'll go to edit and down to content to where fill again. I mean, we're, we're asking a lot of this. These are my, these are my hard examples, right? The difficult examples here. Uh, edit content aware fill. It should be able to nail that one. That one's just set to auto too. All right, there we go. And now I do want to bring in a little bit more like sp uh, ocean, psh, some spray there. So we'll go to edit content aware fill and then 
on this one, okay, it's just kind of more, more of that blah, blah stuff. So we don't want that. So there we go. Let's just go ahead and choose. Hey, give me some of that nice detail. You know, we want the, we want the good splashes in there. That's what, that's what we're doing. Okay, kind of frustrated here because it's still not working exactly what I wanted to do. Ah, okay, there's not enough, I know. Done, well, we're, we're done with you for now. Okay, but I do want some splashes there, so how do we get this? Uh, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add a new layer. I'm gonna go to select and down, down to color range, and then we're just gonna super zoom in here and click on these splashes, right? So I'm just selecting these splashes. And on my new layer, I'm just gonna grab my brush tool and just paint with my brush tool with the same color as those spot splashes right there. Okay, and then look at this. I can just move these splashes anywhere I want to. And I can just add a layer mask here. If it, you know, it's not exactly right over here. Add a layer mask, boop, perfect. Get some splashes over there. And then we'll just duplicate that and get some splashes over there. Alrighty, and put a layer mask there. So. There we go, we've got all the splashes in the world that we want, and everything looks pretty good. Our guys are gone from the background. Again, you know, a tiny bit of little detail up here. Uh, personally, I am just tempted to grab this clone stamp tool, so ask for the clone stamp tool. We're just gonna clone stamp this in and say, okay, let's get the shadow of the, of the person who was there, right? Gotta get their shadow too, or it doesn't count. All right, there we go. Cool, and this layer I'm actually just set to lighten. That way, er, I gotta set that to normal and then do another layer set to lighten. So we'll leave all these little splashes on, alone. So we'll set that to lighten. As you can see, it just affects the dark pixels there. There we go. Fantastic, and we've done a nice job removing everything. So let's go ahead and group those. Let's take a look at our before and our after, yes, everyone is gone. Now, what's the verdict on the new content aware fill tool? I think it's super cool that we have more control over this tool than we had previously. We can actually choose where we're sampling from and it does seem to get better results than it used to. Back in the day, I was just like, I'm not even gonna use this tool. Now I'm like, okay, cool. This is gonna get us like a little bit closer to where we need, but as we've seen, especially when we start to show like a little bit more complicated examples at the tool, it just has a little bit of trouble, which like, I forgive you. You're an automatic tool using technology I don't pretend to understand to like try to fill in this stuff. It's very, very difficult, I'm sure, whatever it's going on. I still find that I need to come back and kind of clean things up after the fact. But I wanna know your opinion. This new Photoshop 2020 Content Aware Fill, is this something you're excited about? Do you like all these new like artificial intelligence tools that Adobe's pushing into Photoshop? Or are you like, I'm a spot healing brush tool and a clone stamp tool fan. Let me know in a comment right down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to get a free tutorial from us every single week, click up here to subscribe. YouTube thinks you're going to love these videos. And if you want to learn more Photoshop, like compositing and retouching is super advanced, awesome stuff, check out Flurn Pro right up there. Thank you so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.